Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Unemployed to Unstoppable. We're approaching game 20, we're coming up to the January transfer window where we really need to strengthen and we've been offered a job interview so plenty to unwrap. Join me after the intro. And welcome back. So we'll just quickly go through the results since you were last with us. It wasn't too long ago. Um, obviously, we'd had the 7-0 victory over Bank and the 4-1 victory over Ajka last time you were here. We followed that with the 4-1 away victory at Soroxa. Uh, and things were looking pretty good. And then we played second in the league. We were unfortunate to go down 2-1 away. We then played top and we held on for a long time for a 0-0. Uh, but eventually, Yannick Velassi got a goal and we fell 1-0 in that game. So two losses in a row. We did pull it back against Guillermo away for a 1-1 victory, a 1-1 draw. So that's given us an extra point. What that means in terms of the table is we're back down into fifth. We're a little bit wayward of that second place, but we've got a chance to strengthen in the window. I have made a short list. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the scouting system, you can put players on a, a short list. So I generally take all the players that my scouts have picked up and recommended. I filter them by the positions I want. So as you can see, I've been looking at Oliver Tamas because I really need a top class centre half. Probably need two if, if I'm honest. Um, he was going to break the budget. They wanted a full 250k for him, which as you can see in the top right hand corner of the screen, we've only got 68k transfer budget and a little bit of wage budget left over. So if, if we want two players, we can't really go for Tamas. I have made a couple offers. Uh, as you can see, Martin Kusk, who's an Estonian centre half, we made an offer for him for 36k. And also Dominic Kovacevic, we made an offer for 46k. We're probably only going to get one of them initially, and we'll have to see what we can do afterwards because I don't think the budget's going to stretch that far. But again, we might be able to shift somebody out the other way, hold off on one of them transfers, and, and let somebody go. And if I was going to let somebody go, it'd probably be someone like Mario Nemeth, although his injury might put pay to that. So stay tuned. I'll come back when we've had some more offers and any more news. And uh, we'll see how the episode develops. Uh, welcome back again. So we have had a job offer for Dioxio, who is in the division above. Um, I'm not really sure about going for this job. Although it is in the Hungarian top division. Um, I think I'm going to have a lot of problems saying that name at the top. Dioxgiori Vazgirak Test Kore which is, is quite a mouthful. So on that alone, we might not take that job. Um, what we might do is go to the interview because um, it might be a, a way of us negotiating a, an extra contract for the club we've currently got. So again, we'll go and see what they have to say. Are we concerned we haven't had that much experience? Not really. Um, we've not been in that long and we're looking to build some experience. It says we've been embro embroiled in media controversies. Not quite sure that's the case. Uh, I can't really recall that many. Um, I think that's something we've learned from. They parted with a company with manager too soon. Um, would we be there for a long time? I think yeah, we, we could commit to that. A manager working with limited resources, if we're pretty good at that. I think we've shown that we can negotiate a budget. And I think we're the ideal candidate to unexpectedly struggle against relegation. Uh, I think we can motivate people. Um, I think we've got the acumen to get the job done. And what sort of budget did we need? I don't think we would need one. So no budget required. So this is what they want. So they'd be looking for us to work within the wage budget, grow the club's reputation, which is pretty standard. Maximum one year contract for players over the age of 34, which is pretty easy because I don't generally like to hold on to too many players that age. Same with the 32 year olds. Uh, avoid relegation and reach the last stages of the Hungarian Cup. I think that second one might be a bit of a struggle and then just continue to avoid relegation. So the question is really whether we think this um, club as a reputation of three star or the one we're currently at is the, the better kind of deal. I'm, I'm a bit torn at the minute. So let me know in the comment section what you think. Should we should we make that move or should we kind of stick where we are at the minute? Um, let's just agree with that for now agree with the expectations, agree with the transfer budget, 192k, which is much more than we've got now, and agree with the wage budget. Don't think we have anything else to propose, and that will conclude the meeting. So I'll update you if anything more comes of that. If not, I'll click through the transfer window 
um, we're currently on on holiday so I'm not going to play any friendlies on camera we'll plow through the transfer window to get to the end of February and then like I said at the end of the previous episode we'll pick two games either the first two or the second two and uh, that'll set at the end of the episode so stay tuned and I'll come back hopefully with some new centre half uh, welcome back well the transfer window has not closed but we have done a little bit of business so we'll just go through that quickly before we watch the first game so we managed to bring in two centre halves which was our main recruitment focus so the first one we got in for a fee was Martin Kusk he's three and a half star better than all our other players we've got him currently playing in a stopper role as you can see his mental uh, stats are really good physicals are pretty good not so good at the heading perhaps um, but as a stopper he's not looking too bad 28 years old um, so he should be with us for a little bit of time so he is the first one and then the second one we managed to bring in just a few moments ago is Milan Sexardi from Pax on loan again he's got slightly better physical stats a little bit more technical probably not quite as good in terms of mental but they, they are both really determined players so again, he'll partner him at the back. It gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of the squad. Uh, unfortunately, we've picked up a few injuries recently. Uh, most notably, the goalkeeper. So if I can just sort out. So Gundel Takax injured. Um, he should be fit to play, although not at his full potential. And we've got Sigardi. He's hopefully going to make his debut alongside Kusk. And then we've got injuries to Horvath and Satmari. So both the left wingers so not ideal as we move into the, the game again Moss and Magyarovar um, so they'll be the games for today that one will come up next and we'll have Kazakvar afterwards by the time we finish them two games that will be the end of the transfer window but we do not expect to make any more sign-ins before then there's no no coffers left in the pot we couldn't unload any players so we've got no wage budget and no more transfer fee but hopefully uh, them defensive additions to the squad might be enough just to sneak us up into that second position. Obviously, the results of the next two games will play big into that, so let's give some big cheers and see how we get on in the first of the two. Uh, welcome back for the first game of the episode uh, at home against Morgan Maskirmar. Um, unfortunately, Gundel Takax hasn't made the first team. He's not even on the bench, so we've got Mergel in goals. A back four of Fabian, Kusk, Sexardi and Nagy. So the two new centre-halves making their debuts. Really stable midfield three of Kern, Kasson, Kremve. And then a front three of Zaretto, Pinter and Kovacs. Kovacs has been on a good run of form again recently. Um, he scored most of our goals. You can see he's on 16 there so far in the league for the season. Which isn't bad when we've only played just over 20 games. Um, so with that in mind, let's see if we can get in there. Blood in the new players number six and 16 respectively and see if we can pick up three points and just try and nudge us back up the table again we fell off a little bit of form after the last episode and um, we did play first and second in the league and unfortunately we weren't able to um, get them over the line or get any points from them we did pick up a draw in our our last game we played in the league but unfortunately one point isn't going to make too much of a difference at the top as we start the game against Moscow Mosson Magyarova so 10 minutes into the game, not too much in terms of chances. A bit of a change in lineup at the top. Normally our Horvath, who was in great form on the left-hand side, he's injured and he's out. So that's going to take out a little bit of our creativity. The midfield three should still be um, more than adequate though to create some chances as Kovac gets a chance from the edge of the box, hits the post. Again, he's been in good goal scoring form. We did play three friendlies in the January window. We didn't have any games on it. Kept up some fitness as Pinter breaks forward. Soretto down the left hand side who hands it on to Fabian he'll get a chance to deliver in it goes into Pinter and he's got a tap in at the back post lovely little bit of play breaks to the byline delivers it deep to the back post and Pinter's just there waiting for a little tap in with his left foot and that puts us 1-0 up just after well just before half hour mark I'm not sure that affects the league table but as we've seen before, when we think we're third, we're fifth, so it's a long way to go yet. As Nagy filling it right back, because Simut's out is injured as well. Pinter down the right-hand side. Into Kasonka in the middle. Ole's already at the half-hour mark. I think it's a bit premature. Uh, Kern to Kasonka, back to Kusk. It'd be nice to see them get a clean sheet on their debut. Into Pinter, and he gets his second of the game. 
but it's been chopped off. Disallowed for offside. A bit close on, I think. I didn't think he was off, but uh, obviously pixel perfect decisions as we're coming up towards the half time mark. Not looking too bad. Uh, they've had their first shot on target. We're looking fairly dominant. Obviously, it'd be nice to get Kovac scoring again after the January break as we build into the last 10 games. Bit of positive morale because we're happy with the possession so far, but what we'd like to see is just a couple more goals. Kovacs, I mean, we could we could make a substitution. Ben Skretska, he scored a couple goals in the friendly, so he got two in the last game. Um, but I don't think he's really ready to take on the mantle up top, although Kovacs is having a bit of a dog's dinner of an afternoon. So let's give Gretzka his chance. First real appearance in the league for him then. Half an hour to go, chance to make his mark. And let's see if he can um, get his name on the score sheet. No real chances so far as we approach the final 10 minutes. Hopefully we're not going to get FM'd and get a draw in the last in the last throws of the game. Vey for Ole in the last couple of minutes. And Gretzka, <laughs> Gret who's come on for his... His first league debut game of the season um, has picked up an injury. I don't know if it tells us what it is. A potential knee injury. So he had a chance to come on and make a difference. We'll put Nemeth on for the final two minutes. It's unfortunate. He's only 24. He's fighting for a contract. At the minute, I'm not probably going to renew it. Um, if he's picked up a big injury, that kind of makes up that decision. So a clean sheet for the back four. Kusk making his debut with a 7.3. Zixardi with a 6.9, he's in on loan. Uh, he's up for contract renewal at the end of the season, so we might try and poach him if we get the opportunity. Pinto with a great game on the right, but overall, pretty good performance. Murgle again with a clean sheet in goals. Doesn't really get much of a chance with Gundal Takax being our first team keeper. But very, very happy with the result, despite his not being at our best. Um, Grex have picked up an injury. We're hopeful we'll have to do some tests, but we'll see. So up into fourth, it's taken us up above Seafock um, within two points of that second place, which is a bit of a fight. Like I've said before, ZT are absolutely miles ahead of us. I don't think we're catching up with that. Greg, so with just five to six day injury, so it's not looking too bad. He should be fresh for the next match. I'll click through. I'll get through past the transfer window. There's not much point really seeing what's happening on deadline day as we've got no funds to buy players and I don't anticipate anybody going out. We need to keep who we've got for the run-in and see if we can just pinch second place. In terms of the job opportunities, we did have that one came in. We did the interview. Unfortunately, we weren't selected. I say unfortunately, I don't think now was the right time to move on anyway. So we'll just carry on. The promising thing is job offers are coming through. So there might be an opportunity in the future to move to a different club. All that being said, I'll click through, get us ready for the second game. So stay tuned and we'll see if we can make it a six-point episode. Uh, welcome back for the second match of the episode away to Kazakhvar. A chance to get six points for the episode and really try and push for that second place in the league, which may just sneak us into a promotion playoff position. Uh, in terms of the starting lineup then for today, Gundal Takax is back in goals. He's returned from injury. Back four of Fabian, Kusk, Siksadi and Nagy. Nagy coming in for Simmer, who's out on injury again. Midfield three, quite stable. Kern, Kusonka and Vey. And then a front three of Horvath, Pinter and Kovac. Sorvath coming back from injury, um, probably a little bit ahead of schedule, um, but that's because we've picked up an injury to Soreto, although we've got Satmari on the bench because he's also come back from injury. That being said, let's get straight in and see if we can pick up six points for the episode. Uh, it was good to get a clean sheet from the last match. I think when we were going through the, um, the end of the transfer window, which closed, we didn't... Um, we didn't have the most players, we didn't have the most expensive players, but we were marked down as the signing of the transfer window in Kusk. Um, I think we've had a strong transfer window, we've, we've focused on the area we needed, got two centre halves in, and uh, hopefully that little bit of stability at the back might just be enough to tip us up the table, get us enough points to get into that second place, which is at the minute the current target. So seven minutes into the game we've had a chance each, uh, Kazakhs are got a uh, corner at the minute, it's gone wide, so we get a chance to regroup. And we'll just have to really monitor the players. There's been a lot of games, really, since we came back. We've had a lot of injuries and players coming back early, like Horvath. We just need to make sure we don't give them too much game time too quickly and cause ourselves any more of a mischief. As Nagy gets the ball down the right-hand side, back to Kern. Kosonka with a finish from the edge of the box, and he curls it into the right-hand post. So 15 minutes in, we'll just look at that again. As he, Nagy turns back. 
plays the ball deep into Kern our playmaker he lays it to Kasonka one touch as we've seen so many times and he just places it wonderfully into the right hand side leaving Yankee with no chance whatsoever so not too bad in the place we want to be with the points we want to be now it's just a case of hopefully keeping a clean sheet as Horvath managed to nick the ball but it's been given back Simon gets through the back gun the attack axe managed to pick it up it's unfortunate they managed to get in through so easy at that that particular point but fortunately we were able to save the chance and hopefully get a few more chances at the other end and maybe put this game out of sight and demoralize them a little bit they've got another chance moving through the middle of the park that was a lovely little shift from Bentz there into Simon and unfortunately this time Simon doesn't miss Bentz there with that lovely little shimmy past the midfield three into Harsanyi, he plays it through to Simon, he takes a touch, slots it past Gundal Takak. So a little bit open at the centre there, half an hour in. And the first goal conceded by the new defensive partnership slips us down into fourth. Not a terrible result, but not what we really want. As straight away within another minute, they've gone 2-1 up. From a throw in on the left hand side, through to Simon, he puts it into Trankensenyi into Harsanyi and he slips it past so it's we've gone from a goal up to 2-1 down in a very quick succession I mean it's, it's not even close to being offside so I don't know why they're showing us a replay and that is a little bit disappointing try and check a little bit of encouragement just before half time but it looks like they're going to get another chance missed header at the back post gives them a chance to put it back in again Karudi back to Harsanyi and oh such a promising start to the game and we find ourselves 3-1 down again let's pick this apart Arsani stands it up to the back post I mean they had three players that had overloaded the back post but Banks gets up ahead of our centre half and unfortunately puts us 3-1 down we do have a chance just before half time but Chris hits the post and he was offside and that is not what we wanted to see I think yeah much improvement needed all round we'll give it a couple minutes just to see how the players sell but certainly I'm looking at Horvath is probably being the one to make way I think we really need to freshen it up up top so Satmari will come on I don't think Nemeth let's get Grexa on for Kovacs I think we'll leave Pinter on because he's an outstanding player for us they to Nagy down the right hand side to pin to Kasonka at the edge of the box had another chance to bend one in unfortunately this time it's been tipped past the post and enables us to make the changes half an hour to go and we're not even looking like getting back in this let's go a bit more attacking is there anything else we can do pin to having a bit of stinker let's get Nemeth on give him some game time if we're going to slip out we might as well get some players on the park Fabian at left back not having a great game and what looked like the, a promising start to the episode is drifting out towards um, only a three pointer as Fabian puts it to Svatmari into Fabian Kosonka two chances to deliver into Gretzka and the young man after the injury in the previous game has managed to get himself on the score sheet poaches goal into Kosonka he drives to the byline, cuts it across at the second attempt. And Gretzka with a little tap in. Ten minutes to go. You never know, he could make himself a hero. And here we go, corner. Nemeth delivers into Sekhan. He, he puts it back out to Nagy. It's come a long way back. Into Kern, a playmaker. Can he find the ball somewhere? To Nagy. Playing the ball around the back over the top to Nemeth, flicked on to Gretzka, and it oh, he's offside. What a hero! <laughs> what a story he was writing for himself there. Into Nemeth, and oh, is he? Uh, I'd like to have seen it from a different angle. I'm not convinced he was um, clear cut offside there. We've got two minutes to go, maybe a chance for an equaliser. Ball breaks to Kusk and Sexardi. Playing the ball quite deep. We're not really able to break them through as we go down the side. Now Gretzka with another chance and he has buried it. He has managed to get the equaliser. Substitute come on. Now, what is the chances of there being enough injury time for him to make it a hat-trick and perhaps even get a winner here? 
Nemeth with a lovely first touch through ball. Gretzka takes a touch on his right foot and he just drills it past the keeper. I think I have a feeling there's not enough time left in the game. Uh, we are going to get to see this from an offside. This time it's in our favour. I mean, he's in acres. I mean, that's a full, a full few yards there. Nagy for Simmer. Three months left. Three minutes left, and unfortunately, it goes. Oof, it's a tense game. Managed to rescue a point. Not the six point that we were looking for. Four points might be enough to keep us in the running. I mean, we should have. Disappointing to lose three goals. Um, we've been quite sound defensively since we made the changes and brought in a couple of new players. We have managed to solidify our position and get into fourth from where we were in fifth. So it is a positive move through the uh, through the episode, um, but not where we want to be. We've, I mean, we're four points off on Ved, eight games to go. So there is always the chance of getting in there. In terms of the schedule, I'll play through and I'll come back with the last two games. So Mezcavez and Bank. If we've got a chance of getting the playoffs, um, I'll play both games. If it's looking like we're not going to make the playoffs, we'll probably just come back for one and then do an end-of-season review. Um, but hopefully we can win a few games, maintain pace with the league, and hopefully when I bring you back for the next episode, we'll be on for a possible promotion push. So once again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. If you liked what you've seen, stick a thumbs up. Make sure you ring the bell so you can get notification when the next episode comes out. And I will see you next time. Thank you.